You're listening to The Jacob Vaux Show. He's breaking down the latest and greatest in sports as only he can. Follow him on Twitter at Real Jacob Vaux. Here he is. Jacob Vaux. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to another edition of the Jacob Volk Show. I am Jacob Volk, and I'm not going to preface what I'm going to talk about today. We all know that this is the Super Bowl preview show. Maybe, depending on how long it is, I'll get to a hodgepodge of other stories, but probably not. I really want to keep this dedicated to just the Super Bowl. Um, You know, I really wanted to wait to do one show fully dedicated to the Super Bowl. Maybe at the end you could talk about other things, but no, I just wanted to have one show to talk about the Super Bowl. If you've been listening all week, you know that I really haven't talked about it. And that's because I didn't want to rehash the same old storylines. You know, if you watch the press conferences on Radio Row, you can hear the same questions being asked over and over and over again, and it just gets really frustrating to me. So, I like that this is how I did it. I think it's a good format. Enough prefacing on to the preview. This is the quintessential battle of a great offense versus a great defense. The irresistible force that is the Kansas City Chiefs offense going up against the immovable object. That is the 49ers defense. You have the best offense in the league going up against the best defense in the league. And you really can't ask for any more than that in a Super Bowl. This Super Bowl has had a very, very quiet lead up to it. There haven't been any crazy radio row moments. There haven't been any contrived storylines. It's all been about the game. Which is really the way the Super Bowl should be. You know, when a team like the Patriots is in it nine times, yeah, eventually you're going to need to create some storylines because you can only ask Tom Brady and Bill Belichick the same questions, you know, so many times. But this is different. This Super Bowl represents a changing of the guard in the NFL. You have two teams here in the Chiefs and Niners who I think are going to be in many, many Super Bowls for the next uh, 10 to 15 years. We may even see this matchup again in the not-so-distant future. And that's why there hasn't been so much of a lead-up, I think. Could it be because there have been other big sports stories like the Kobe Bryant tragedy and the sign-stealing scandal? Possibly. It may be a contributing factor, but I don't think it's the seminal reason. I think the seminal reason is that there's no need to make up any storylines here. This is just... A battle of two great teams. We know how great the Chiefs are. We know how great the Niners are. We don't need to make anything up to get people excited about this game. I will say this. And I may be a little skewed here because I'm a Jets fan. 
and there's no one that hates the Patriots more than me. But I can't remember a Super Bowl that I've looked forward to this much. Certainly none of the Brady ones. Not Broncos Seahawks, even though that was in my home stadium. Not Panthers Broncos. The only one that I can think of that even comes close to this in my lifetime, and even then, it's way, way, way behind this game, is Colts-Bears. Peyton Manning being in the game, two African-American coaches going at it, so we were guaranteed to see the first African-American head coach win a Super Bowl. But other than that, I can't think of one. Steelers, Cardinals, no. The Harbaugh was fun, but this is way, way, way ahead of that. This is going to be a great, great Super Bowl. This is really going to be a Super Bowl for the ages, I think. The last few years, we've been blessed with some iconic Super Bowls. You had 28-3. to You had the backup quarterback coming in and beating the best head coach and player in NFL history. And even last year, last year's game was a close game throughout. The only reason that people didn't like that game was because they expected an offensive shootout. Instead, they got a defensive slugfest. Offensive shootouts are more exciting than defensive slugfests. But I gotta tell you, I liked last year's Super Bowl. I didn't like the result, but I liked watching the game. This Super Bowl has the potential to top all of them. For starters, you've got a changing of the guard in the NFL. The old click of quarterbacks that we've gotten so accustomed to seeing in Super Bowls aren't there this year. There's no Brady. There's no Roethlisberger. There's no Wilson. There's no Manning. There's no Breeze. There's no Rodgers. There are two fresh faces here. Patrick Mahomes and Jimmy Garoppolo. Two guys that are very, very easy to root for. And the NFL has to love this. The NFL has to love that they have two young quarterbacks in the Super Bowl. You really can't get excited about seeing Tom Brady... Again, unless you're a Patriots fan. Enough already. Let somebody else win. (laughs) There was a question that was asked at Roger Goodell's uh, press conference at Radio Row. And I'll paraphrase. Are you upset that Patrick Mahomes doesn't play in a bigger media market. Are you joking? The best thing that can happen to the NFL is that he doesn't play in a big media market. The biggest issue in sports right now is competitive balance. Every league fights to achieve competitive balance and you have a team like the Chiefs a team that's been let's face it really bad for a really long time leading up to drafting Mahomes and now they're suddenly on the precipice of being the next NFL dynasty It's the best thing that could ever happen to the NFL. Would it be better if it was a team like... I hate to say this. I really do because this is going to come off as being biased. 
but it's the best example I can give. A team like the Jets, a team in the biggest media market in the world, but a team that hasn't made the Super Bowl in over 50 years, just like the Chiefs? Maybe. But Mahomes is already marketable enough that he doesn't need to play in a big media market. You see him every day on those State Farm commercials. The NFL can afford to have superstars in smaller media markets. They own a day of the week. Millions of people will seek out the Kansas City Chiefs just to watch Patrick Mahomes that otherwise wouldn't watch that game. There's no need for him to play in a bigger media market. There's no need to really break down this game in depth. It's pretty obvious that the Chiefs have the better offense. It's pretty obvious that the Niners have the better defense. And it's pretty obvious that the Chiefs have the better special teams and the better coach. Instead, I think the best way to talk about this game is to break down how both teams can win it. But even then, that's pretty obvious. It's all going to come down to time of possession. If the 49ers can keep Patrick Mahomes on the sidelines... They will win this game. The Niners are going to need a lot of drives that have double-digit plays that burn six or seven minutes off the clock. And it is possible for them to do that. They have the running game necessary to do that. Raheem Mostert burst onto the scene this year, and given the game he put up, Two weeks ago, there's no reason to think that he can't be the best player for the 49ers on Sunday if they're going to win. He's going to be the focal point of their offense on Sunday. It won't be Kittle. It won't be Garoppolo. It won't be Sanders. It has to be Mostert. And he'll be aided by a great great, great offensive line. The thing that Kyle Shanahan has done really well this year, and he doesn't get enough credit for it, is his blocking schemes. He learned it from his father, and if you watch this Niners team, you'll see a lot of similarities between their run game and Mike Shanahan's run game with Terrell Davis with the Broncos when they won their two Super Bowls. And there's a reason why Kyle didn't change it. Because it works. The old Green Bay Packers offense, it was just the sweep to the right or the left and the offensive line would run in that direction and clear a hole for Jim Taylor or Paul Horning or whoever it was. And no defense could stop it. They knew it was coming. They couldn't stop it. You know why? Because it worked so damn well. It's a perfect game plan. And their blocking schemes are perfect. The Chiefs are going to need to find a way to get to Mostert behind the line of scrimmage. Make Garoppolo beat you. That's not to say Garoppolo can't. Garoppolo's a very good quarterback. He's not great. And if he wins on Sunday, he won't be great. He'll still be very good. No matter what the result is on Monday, nothing will change the fact that Patrick Mahomes is a better quarterback than Jimmy Garoppolo. Niners fans are trying to talk up Garoppolo like he's great. He can get there. There's no question about that, but he's not there yet. Look, I was 100% wrong about Garoppolo. All right, I was not sold on him. 
I did not think he'd be able to stay healthy this year, and even if he stayed healthy, I certainly didn't think he'd put together this season. Threw for almost 4,000 yards, 2-1 to one touchdown to interception ratio, and a really nice 69% completion percentage. But if Garoppolo is asked to convert on a lot of third and longs in this game, that does not bode well for the Niners. It's really, really funny. If the Chiefs are going to win this game, it has to be by their offense. If the Niners are going to win this game, it's going to be by their defense. We all know that. But the X factors for this game are the exact opposite. The Chiefs' defense and the 49ers' offense. If the Chiefs' defense can stop Mostert, then fantastic. Patrick Mahomes is going to get the football for 35 minutes and do Patrick Mahomes things. If the Niners' offense can keep the ball moving and take a lot of time off the clock, then they've got a great, great, great chance of winning this game. Whenever it's a great offense versus a great defense, usually it's the other end of that that decides those games. The worst offense going up against the worst defense. And which side can step up. And the Chiefs defense does have players capable of stepping up and making big plays. So far this postseason, Bashad Breland, Tyran Matthew, Kendall Fuller, and Frank Clark have played really, really well. Daniel Sorensen has proven why he is one of the best tacklers in the NFL as well. And while he hasn't had a great postseason so far, you still have to respect Chris Jones. Ever since he stepped foot in the league, he's been one of the best defensive linemen in football. The Chiefs' defense is going to need to make big plays and force the Niners into punting and giving the ball back to Patrick Mahomes. I've seen some people say that the Niners' defense is going to be able to stop Patrick Mahomes. No, 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 no. There is no stopping this man. This man is elite. This man is a generational talent. You may be able to slow him down, but you're not going to stop him. The thing that you love about Mahomes, forget the crazy passes that he makes. The no-look passes, the extending plays, the left-handed throws... He has the heart of a lion. It doesn't matter if the Chiefs are down by 30 going into the second half. Patrick Mahomes will not let this team quit. And even then, if the Chiefs are down by 30, you still can't count the Chiefs out. In both of their playoff games this year, they've had to overcome deficits. It's very difficult in postseason football to come back and win. These teams are really good at getting the lead and not relinquishing it. Mahomes has negated all of that. He's the kind of guy who, even if the ball is backed up at the one-yard line, is capable of a 99-yard touchdown pass. He's so much fun to watch. Whatever his next contract is going to be, it's not going to be enough. $200 $200 million, all guaranteed, still not enough. <laughs> He's just unreal. Kelsey's going to make big plays for him. Hill is going to make big plays for him. Hardman may make big plays for him. Sammy Watkins has emerged as one of the clutchest wide receivers in the league this year. Something that I definitely didn't see coming. Their rushing game is going to be non-existent. I'd be very surprised if the Chiefs ran the ball with Damian Williams or whoever more than 15 times. 
And even then, that seems like a lot. The Chiefs are going to air it out and try to have Mahomes throw for 300 or even 400 yards. And he's more than capable of doing that. But the Niners are more than capable of stopping it. Kawan Williams, Dre Greenlaw, Eric Armstead, and DeForest Buckner have all had great postseasons. Nick Bosa has emerged as one of the best uh, defensive players in the NFL, which is saying something because he's a rookie, and Richard Sherman has had a career renaissance. If there's a defense that can slow down Patrick Mahomes, it's this one. This should certainly give you cause for concern if you're a Chiefs fan. You're not going to run this team out of the building. They're going to give you a great fight on defense. They're not going to be afraid of you. And there will be some drives that the Niners' defense steps up and makes you punt. The trick is going to be bouncing back from that. It's going to be making the necessary adjustments to win this game. Obviously, both teams are going to have a game plan going into this game, but if the game plan goes south, they're going to need to make on-the-fly adjustments. Even if the game plan doesn't go south, if you see something that can be exploited, change it up and exploit it. A lot of teams just get bogged down in their game plan, and they don't have the coaches necessary to make those adjustments. Both of these teams do. Read Shanahan, Salah, and Spagnolo are capable of changing things up on the fly and making the adjustments necessary to win a football game. They've done it all here. All in all, I think this is going to be a great Super Bowl, a Super Bowl for the ages. I'd be really, really disappointed if it wasn't. There's a case to be made for both teams. The way that Mahomes is playing, how can anyone expect to beat him? But the Niners have a defense that may not be as good as the 85 Bears, but I'll tell you, man, this is the best defense we've seen in the NFL in a while. Early on this year, we were talking about how good the Patriots' defense was. The Niners' defense is a million times better than them. And that's saying something, because that was one scary Patriots defense. I think this is going to be a close game throughout. I think you'll see multiple lead changes. I don't think either team will be up by double digits. I think it's going to be close all throughout. And I'm picking the Chiefs to win 21-17. to That may be a little too low scoring for some. Some people will think that the Chiefs are going to put up 30. I don't see the Niners defense letting that happen. I think Mahomes will throw for three touchdowns and over 300 yards. He'll definitely get his. But the score will be respectable. And like I said, this is going to be the best Super Bowl that we've had In a long, 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 long time. Alright. No hodgepodge at the end. That was a stupid idea to even bring that up. Bad job, Jacob. I'm sorry. 50 lashes with a wet noodle. Enjoy the game on Sunday. Hope you have fun at your party. I hope you enjoy the halftime show. I think it's going to be a great halftime show. I'll tell you that, J-Lo and Shakira, holy moly, two of the biggest stars in music, and both of them are very, very, very easy on the eyes. Shakira's hips don't lie, and J-Lo's ass doesn't lie. (laughs) A-Rod, you lucky (laughs) so-and-so! All right, on Monday, big, 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 big show, Super Bowl recap, plus a Pro Football Hall of Fame recap. I'll be recapping who their normal class is, and 
You're going to get a New York Islanders show. It'll probably be a second half preview of sorts. I know I kind of outlined it a couple weeks ago, but I'll put a finer point on it. Until next time, I am Jacob Volk saying that in the seventh inning of a baseball game, the fans get up and sing, take me out to the ball game when they're already there. It's really a stupid thing to say.